if you're Thomas Reese and you're putting all this together, looking at our what we think are going to be strengths or areas where we still need a little work and lack of depth, wide receiver, whatever, how do you think he's going to structure this offense to put Buckner in the best position to succeed, also not put him in a position to get the hell beat out of him by, you know, running the ball and he and all these uh, keep it, pitch it, what and he keeps it and just gets the hell beat out of him. How do you think or want Reese to put together this offense for this year so it accentuates his strengths? Well, I mean... Creating space for Buckner would ultimately kind of be your answer, right? Because we know what he is as a runner, and that's a really good runner as a quarterback. Our pass, what he's able to do as a passer, we're not as it's not as known commodity. So, how do you build as much strength around him to give him success, especially in being able to utilize his feet? Well, we talked about it a little bit earlier. Like you get speed guys out there, you have absolute burners in Tyree and. Um, in Braden Lindsay right now. Uh, also, you look at it and uh, Deion Colsey, if, if he can emerge and get on the field a good amount, like that's another guy that's a burner. Uh, maybe not quite on the same level, but pretty close to it. You fill this up with speed and you have the over the threat tops that have to be given, given the proper respect because of the big play that might be there. Then you have Michael Mayer that we talked about briefly a little bit. You, that you was the next that, thing. That's the next thing I was going to bring up. You figure that's your ultimate bailout nine times out of ten. But if he starts to dictate that kind of because if, if it's if it's linebacker on Michael Mayer, you're throwing that pass every freaking time. Yep. So you assume that that starts to see double teams, black break, uh, bracket coverages to him. And then all of a sudden you have speed guys running defensive backs uh, like that mixed with an offensive line that can pass protect a, a little bit and buy Buckner time or zone block and ways for Buck. Like you can make this that he can make set up to run and have some pretty stinking big time success. I would think because of building it around the strengths of what is what what, what you are know what are known commodities on this offense. Yeah. And, you know, like I, I sit there and I wonder sometimes, like if I'm Reese putting this together, looking at what I know I have, or I wonder if he ever is like, man, I would really like to do this and this and this and this, but I got to look at this wide receiver room and I just don't think we're there yet. So I got to pair that ultimate plan back to do more of what we can do, maybe, maybe early in the year. And then as things develop, you can start unleashing more of that. Like, I just wonder all the ingredients in that recipe that come up with the, the beginning plan against Ohio State. Like, looking at what we know we could do, what we think we could do, what we know we're a little uh, struggling in. Um, I think anything that puts a stress on that defense of his legs causing that stress, you know, any of those plays where these quarterbacks kind of roll out by some time and you don't know, the defense doesn't know whether they're going to keep it and they come up. And if you come up, then you just throw the ball. And if you don't come up, he gets nine yards and he's out of bounds. There's a lot you could do with the guy with these legs. I just don't want him to get killed. Well, yeah, that's yeah, my big it, concern. Yeah, it's a guy that had an ACL injury in high school his junior year. And that's, that's ultimately what a concern certainly is with it. And it, Take the good with the bad there. I, I just think you have so many things that can that are beneficial and able to get him in open space and to run, theoretically. What I would have liked to have seen last year as part of the reason why is, in terms of his development, would have liked to have seen him be forced to throw more in terms mm -hmm. of the play calling instead of it being set run plays that he's put out there, designated for to be on the field for. Like I would have liked to have seen that so it's not as much, okay, just Buckner is a runner, Buckner is a runner, Buckner is a runner. Like – get kind of that tested a bit more in the waters of, of, of forcing to throw the ball. And and that way, maybe it's more of a, okay, well, yeah, he can also kill you with his legs instead of a, we know he can kill you with his legs, but can he hit on some of these long passes or some of these big passes that you figure that he's going to have to hit on occasionally? Otherwise, they're just going to, okay, well, it's great that Lindsey or Styles or whoever can run by everybody, but 
doesn't do any good if the quarterback can't get him the ball. Like I'd like to have no have that as a more of a known commodity than just the okay, well we know that Buckner if if he's gonna have space to run, he's gonna pick up nine, twelve yards with regularity. I'd like to have that those kind of reversed uh, of at least of what I know uh, going into the year. You know what? You know what's weird to me with Buckner, man, and I can't figure this out. Even in not only just fans, but like Notre Dame media people that are at a lot of these practices that the general public are not at. I have had a bunch of people be like, I don't understand why they don't let Buckner throw more. He would be fine. Let it rip. And I have other people tell me that he like is inaccurate and can't complete passes in practice. But they're all like Notre Dame people watching the same practices theoretically. And then in the games, like you said, we barely got to see him throw enough that I feel confident making any large-scale proclamation about good at it, bad at it in the middle. It's just weird to me that depending on who I ask from guys that were at the same open practices or media practices, that they have that different, differing views on it. And I don't know what to make of that. They all are seeing a lot of the same stuff, but I have some guys, man, you're going to love it once he lets it rip. And other people are going, inaccurate as can be, makes me nervous. It's just weird to me how our immediate media is shooting all over on that. Yeah, I I guess it depends on what day you see him in practice. Like, it's ultimately, I don't have that answer. And I I guess that's part of why we love sports, right? You, You walk into this year with a complete suspicion or an unknown of, what is Buckner ultimately? What is he as a passer? Like, is he going to be able to take steps and prog- and, and progress that way? Hopefully, hopefully that's the case because I mean, real good things, real fast for Notre Dame's offense, especially with what I think is going to be a really improved offensive line unit. I think that the top part of your receivers group is pretty good. It just has no depth to it whatsoever. Like, I think this has the makings to be a pretty good, maybe not like fantastic offense, but makings of a pretty good offense. And like, yeah. And I think I like um, it's set up for Buckner to succeed. I really do. And that speaks to what Tommy Reese has done off as an offensive coordinator. And I think having the handcuffs off him a bit with Kelly gone is going to do him favors as well. Yeah. And, and, and I know that the, all the reports and the way Reese thinks, you know, he's also thinking down the road of what he wants this all to look like. And he has visions of what he wants some of these position groups to look like, different different kinds of wide receivers he wants here and there. So there's an extended plan there. My biggest thing is I just want Buckner to be healthy enough that this can all develop together, him and the line, him getting more comfortable, him building more rapport, throwing the ball with these guys, all of that. Like That's the biggest thing, because if this first Marcus Freeman year really goes off the rails in a negative way, I got a feeling a big piece of that's got to be injuries at key positions. Buckner's number one right off the bat, and then maybe, you know, Fisher, another offensive lineman or two. Um, Maybe Joseph in the secondary, a guy you just can't afford to lose after you just lost the guy to the Ravens you couldn't afford to lose. Yeah, You know, like... Like, health is health. And I don't think it's fair to look at Buckner and be like, oh, injury prone. I don't like, like injury prone, shitty luck. Like, I don't know which it is, but I just know that I don't like seeing him always in a brace of some sort, you know? So just stay healthy. Get get out of bounds. You don't need that one extra yard. Get out. Right. Right, don't have to be a hero unless it's a game-winning drive against Clemson or USC. Right. Pick lately. your spot. Pick your exactly. spot for the hero right. stuff. Um, Franco Harris got made fun of a lot for stepping out of bounds, but Franco Harris ran for a lot of damn yards in his career and a lot of extra yards later in his career by doing so and choosing to make a couple of business decisions there throughout his career instead of lowering his shoulder and trying to hammer out an extra yard all the time. Yeah, that that's a really good point.